So we've been talking about replication. And if you remember in the last lecture, we talked about broadcast protocols. And the whole point of a broadcast protocol is for all of the nodes to receive some set of messages in some order. And uh, the point of replication is for all of the replicas to process some updates. So you might be wondering, hmm, shouldn't we be able to use a broadcast protocol to do replication? And you would be right. Indeed, we can use broadcast protocols and we're going to look at that now. So first of all, let's start with FIFO total order broadcast, the strongest of the broadcast protocols, which we considered. And uh, if you remember, the point of total order broadcast is that all of the nodes will deliver the same set of messages in the same order, which is exactly what we want for replication. And this approach is called state machine replication. So the algorithm is simple. Whenever a replica wants to make some update to its state, it uses FIFO total order broadcast to broadcast that update to all of the replicas. And whenever a replica delivers one of these updates, it processes that update applies it to, in, to its own state. So it updates its own state as a function of this update that it received uh, over the broadcast. And the key thing that makes this work is that the logic for applying an update is deterministic. And so you can think of each replica as a state machine. Each uh, The state of the replica is all of the data that it has stored. And every replica starts off in a fixed starting state, which is usually an empty database containing no data. And then the deterministic state update means that whenever two replicas are in the same state and we give them the same input, then they will transition to the same next state. And because FIFO total order broadcast ensures that each of the replicas receives uh, delivers the same updates in the same order, uh, if we take these delivered updates uh, to be the input to the state machine, then on each replica, the state machine is going to go through the same sequence of state transitions um, and they're both going to end up in the same state after they've processed the same sequence of messages. So this is exactly what we want of, of state machine replication. And it's it's a it's very good uh, way of performing replication, just because if we have this total order broadcast, then the replication algorithm itself is really simple. It's just whenever we have an update, we broadcast it via total order broadcast. And whenever we deliver uh, an update, we update the state accordingly. And this idea is actually very widely used in a whole range of different replicated systems. So there are some uh, databases, some distributed databases, for example, which use this approach uh, for uh, replicating transactions. So this, this logic here of the updating the state, uh, as long as it's deterministic, it can be any arbitrarily complex logic. So you can package a whole transaction, including arbitrary business logic, uh, into this and make sure that the, the inputs to the transactions get uh, delivered to all of the replicas through total order broadcast. And then you can independently execute this transaction on each of the replicas and they will end up in the same state. Uh, very nice, very nice principle. A very similar principle underlies uh, blockchains and distributed ledgers and uh, smart contracts and all of this area. What you have in a blockchain is a, a chain of blocks and this chain of blocks is actually exactly the sequence of messages delivered by a total order broadcast protocol. So there's a consensus mechanism around performing, uh, implementing this total order broadcast. But once you've got it, it's just a sequence of transactions or updates or um, jobs that need to be performed in a certain order. And each uh, replica will process those deterministic transactions in the same order, and therefore they will end up in the same state. And in this case, the state uh, cons uh, constitutes a ledger saying who owns uh, which coins, for example. Now, the downside of state machine replication are the downsides of total order broadcast. So if you remember, when we were looking at total order broadcast, we said that when a node wants to broadcast a message, it cannot immediately deliver that message's message to itself. It has to coordinate with the other nodes uh, in order to decide the order in which the replicas are going to uh, deliver the messages. And the same applies here with state machine replication. So that means a replica cannot immediately update its own state. It has to go through the total order broadcast process in order to know the order in which the state, in which these updates are going to get applied. And it does mean that we need a total order broadcast protocol. We will study that in the next lecture. 
Another example of how this principle of, of uh, total order broadcast is used for replication is in what is called passive replication for databases. And so what happens here is that you have got a, a leader database and one or more follower databases. And if you remember what we said about total order broadcast, one way that you can implement total order broadcast is by designating one node as the leader. And that leader is going to decide on an order of the messages and then all of the other uh, nodes are going to deliver the messages in the order they were broadcast by the leader. And this is exactly what happens in database replication. So in database replication, you've got one client which requests the leader to execute some transaction, and maybe uh, another client concurrently requests uh, the leader to also execute some transaction, and those transactions might execute concurrently on the leader. Uh, we do have usually the requirement that only the leader can execute transactions if those transactions are going to modify the database state. So any read-only transactions could execute on the followers, but any uh, read-write transactions have to execute on the leader. Now, transactions may execute concurrently, but they will commit in some total order. And this commit order is the crucial thing here, because when a transaction commits, then a a record is appended to the commit log saying what were the changes that were data changes that were made by this transaction and this commit record is sent to all of the followers via total order broadcast so then all of the followers will apply the transaction commits and the data changes from each transaction in the commit order and so again we've got the same principle all of the the leader and all of the followers are applying the commits in the same order, and so they go through the same sequence of state transitions, again, using the same principle as, um, as a state machine replication. So that is using total order broadcast. It's clearly a good way of implementing, uh, implementing replication. We also discussed weaker forms of broadcast. So we discussed causal broadcast and FIFO broadcast, reliable broadcast, and best effort broadcast. So can we use those as well for implementing replication? And the answer is yes, we can. It just requires a little bit more care. So uh, one concept we need for this is commutativity. And so we're going to say that two updates are commutative if you can apply them in either order. So either you apply first F, then G, or you apply first G, then F and the end result is the same, no matter in which order you apply these two updates. Now, clearly not all updates are commutative, only we have to specifically design the algorithm for updates to be commutative if we want it to be commutative. But it is possible to design uh, updates in such a way that they are commutative. And if we do that, then for example, we can use um, causal broadcast. So if, so with causal broad broadcast, we also require that um, processing update is deterministic. That is still a, a requirement of, of any of these broadcast-based replication models. Um, but then remember that the order guaranteed provided by, by causal broadcast is if one message happened before another, then they, those messages get delivered in their happens before order, but two concurrent messages might be delivered in either order. And so if we want to ensure that all of the replicas end up in the same state, then we must ensure that for any two updates that are concurrent, their state update functions must commute. And so if we have that, then that means that any non-commutative state updates will be provided in the same, in the right order by causal broadcast. And any, any updates that might be reordered by causal broadcast are commutative and so therefore we can apply them in either order and will end up in the same state. Now we can generalize this further and with reliable broadcasts we have no ordering guarantees at all. We just, and we just have the guarantee that uh, every message is delivered exactly once. And so for in this case we have to have all of the, um, all of the updates that must commute um, because the broadcast protocol provides no ordering guarantees. And we could go even weaker, so we could even go to best effort broadcast, in which case we're not even guaranteed any particular number of deliveries for a certain message. So a message might be lost or it might be delivered multiple times. So in this case, the state update function will have to tolerate message loss and it will have to tolerate messages being delivered multiple times through idempotence. But you can see that actually all these different models of broadcast we can use in order to build replication systems. 
So that's all for this lecture. In the next lecture, we're going to drill into some more detail on how actually we implement this total order broadcast in a way that is reliable.